Welcome to the Charleston Real Estate Connection Podcast, connecting and reconnecting you with all things Charleston. I am your host, Nia Joy, your golden realtor, licensed in the state of South Carolina. Welcome to the show. So I have decided to go live for the 12th episode of the Charleston Real Estate Connection Podcast. I have... um, it has been quite a time. Um, my goodness. So, thank you guys for those of you who have been um, listening and engaging on the podcast and giving feedback. I appreciate it. I have just want to do this live video because I know many of us are changing the way we go about life, go about the way we do business and um, despite everything there are people still buying and selling real estate I'm not really gonna go into that in detail um, but I would like to uh, send thoughts and prayers to all of you that are affected um, mainly for those who, who are higher risk or um, maybe quarantined and may have found out that you may be infected uh, my thoughts and prayers with you and your family, you guys, um, I pray for healing and, and strength within our homes, within our faith, uh, our communities. This has been quite a time, quite a time. Um, thank you guys for checking in. Um, so this is the 12th episode of the Charleston Real Estate Connection podcast. I am your host, Nia Joy. You're a Golden Realtor licensed in the state of South Carolina with Homegate Real Estate. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with how I do the podcast, but um, usually I have a guest. Um, More often than not, I have a guest and we we talk about what their connection is to Charleston. So if you want to drop in your connection to Charleston, you're welcome to do that. You're you're technically the guest today. Um, Wow. So... We're in March. We're wrapping, wrapping things up in March, and everybody probably has um, some hand sanitizer. I know for my company, our company policy is that when we're out showing houses, um, open houses, things like that, we, of course, um, must sanitize constantly um, and give our guests uh, some sanitizer before we enter the home. And after we enter the after we exit the home, people are still previewing properties. If you can believe that, uh, people are still selling homes. So um, a lot of people are asking, "What's up with the real estate market? Um, is there going to be a recession? Is there going to be um, turmoil?" Well, the, the the short answer right now is no. But of course, we do not know what the future brings. Nonetheless, um, we stay the course and that's what we do, especially those of us who are working actively with our clients. So we're really trying to um, keep working with our clients and if they would like us to continue with the selling of their home, we're we're moving forward, you know. Um, And so far, my clients, I have buyers and sellers and they're just like, I want to make stuff. I want to keep it moving. Fortunately, a lot of my clients are not moving outside of the area right now, but I do have several clients that are trying to move into Charleston. Um, And a couple of them are like, "Um, is there a way I can get around this whole moving around thing? And and technically, you you really can't. I mean, I know that um, I know that's something that's a concern for some people. Hey, Miss Terry. Will the market slow down? Uh, that's a very good question. The market, as of right now, it's not. As of right now, it's not. As long as we're allowed to um, sell homes legally, we will. Um, um, hey, Dion, I was I, I have some new podcasts coming up, and, and it's so funny. And one of the agents I was talking to, he was saying something about the coronavirus rates. And um, I can't wait for you guys to hear that that particular episode. But the point I'm making is, I'm still get, I'm still engaging with other agents. Um, 
both in Charleston and outside of Charleston, we are still sending each other referrals and still uh, attempting to work the deal, having people move and close on their homes. So now the market as of right now, has it slowed down? Will it slow down? To be determined. Um, so Charleston actually just wrapped up the one of the best um, selling months and that was February last month we hit oh man we sold we had a huge sale jump in February and that was right before of course the spread of corona the post and Curry did an awesome quick article about that um, talking about how we did a 4.4 percent um, jump you might want to check that article out. I'll put that in the show notes uh, that's that's that has been what we've been dealing with with the market um, people are still buying and selling homes so that was a part of my my market report to let you guys know what's been happening there um, as far as the the agents in Charleston we most of the agents that I talked to um, they're still being active um, there are some agents that have said some of their clients um, actually are like I want to put a pause on on searching but again personally that has not happened to me and my clients I, again I sanitize them <laughs> as much as I can and, and make sure I educate them about you know adhering to whatever local state and federal guidelines that are in place that may affect them personally you may have had some of your jobs are um, having you work from home um, I'm still going on listing appointments um, I'm still doing evals I'm, I'm doing video calls phone calls so I'm just trying to make myself flexible um, for my clients, um, both both past and current, because that's important. You want to make make sure they're comfortable. So I'm really curious to know how you guys are doing. Thank you for that question, um, Ms. Terry. How are you doing? I know you're probably, you know what? Okay. I was just trying to read read this feed here. Anyway, um. I want to know how are y'all doing I am at home with my kids I mean my husband and I are both working from home so that's something we're balancing right now I, I don't know how you guys are balancing everything but um, it's a challenge it's a challenge I want to hear some of your stories if you don't mind because this episode is actually a real episode that I'm recording right now oh you're not so it's not a stay at home okay so Barbara said, I am not a stay-at-home mama. <laughs> uh, Rachel says, I think everything is going to slow down. And that may be true, Rachel. Um, that may be true. Um, what about you? Are you working, Rachel? Are you still at work? I know some people are working. I know you work. Um, you're you're multi-talented, so you have a couple things going on. But some people do work from home. Um, I was talking to somebody today who works at MUSC, and, and they're working from home for HR which they do a lot often anyway. Um, oh, you work for the big three. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it is hard. It is hard. It is hard, uh, Barbara. It's, it's been tough. Um, I, I'm a glass full kind of person. And so right now, I'm just really trying to put all my energy into focusing on and this too will pass and I'll, you know, my family and I will be okay. And, you know, just trying to be as safe as possible. I just, I'm so grateful to be healthy and safe. And, um, yeah. So Rachel says, I work for Chrysler and we are off until, so I'm guessing, yeah, until it gets better. Um, wow. That's, a, that's, yeah, that's in the D. Rachel was in the D, Detroit. Anybody here got a um, got a connection to Charleston? Anybody, um, whether you're in Charleston or not, I'm just curious to hear how everything's going on with you. So Jennifer says, I'm out of rotation. The dental office is closed. I know Den Jennifer is um, a dentist, so she's she her office is closed. I actually got my dentist appointment in yesterday. So they, they, they closed and um, they got me in their appointment. So Barbara says, yes, absolutely trying to enjoy it all and knowing that we will get through this. Yes, thank you. We have to think like that. We have to think like that um, no matter what industry we're in because um, I know the government is really trying to put out some um, some relief efforts for, for jobs and um, business owners 
and employers. We are just trying to hang in there. How are y'all doing at the store? I have been hearing some stories about the stores. What's going on with that? I, my husband came home today and told me, and for those of you who know my husband, he is a big guy. Like he works out every day. He is sad because the gym is closing. Um, I mean, he's, he's sad with reason. I mean, he understands he has to close, but, um, so he told, he tells me he's in the store and we, he went to go get some toilet paper. Fortunately, we're not out of toilet paper, but he was just trying to keep us afloat and we don't try to hoard it or anything, but we always buy things in bulk. We at least try to. And he said he was in the store. He was reaching for, uh, some, some toilet paper. And when he went to go reach for it, um, he was reaching for it at the same time as a couple other guys. And so he said the shorter guy was beside him and he reached for the paper and another guy like literally just snatched it out of his hand and just, they all three of them is like just standing there. And I'm like, so the first thing I, in my mind is I'm like, oh man, did my husband get, you know, I'm just thank God he didn't get arrested because you know, it, it wasn't him, but he was saying pretty much like the guy just took the toilet paper out of his hand. Like who does that? I don't know what I would have done in that was situation. I know a lot of people are like, if that was me, I would do X, Y, and Z, but I don't I don't know what I would have done if that was me. My husband said fortunately he he believes nobody did it to him because of his size. So that's good. Um Jennifer says she's looking for her next hustle. Who else is looking for their next hustle? And then Barbara, you said we Yep, yeah, we do have this. She's curious, she's curious how people are dealing with the grocery store. Yeah, that's what I was just talking about, the grocery store situation. Who else is dealing with that? Let me see. Let me try to leave anything out. Um, I don't really have any crazy um, stories. I did go to Piggly Wiggly today. I was really fortunate uh, when I went to Piggly Wiggly. They had a lot of stuff. They had, um, and you know, everybody was kind of far apart. I mean, the only time you had to really walk near somebody if you were an aisle walking by. But um, Piggly Wiggly was crazy. You can rinse your butts, people. <laughs> yes, you can. You can. You can. Listen, I just don't want to get to the point where I have to use a cloth. You know what I'm saying? So I would like to keep my toilet paper. You know. Um. But anybody out there who is aware of um anybody in need, they looking for um what you guys looking for? Anybody looking for anything? I've been fortunate enough. I've been kind of hopping stores. I went to um, pick up some batteries today, and what else? Um, some cereal and some milk because you only can have so much of that stuff. I'm fortunate I drink almond milk so there was always a lot of almond milk available when I wanted it. Um, yeah, that, that, that almond milk is like everything. You know, like I'm just so fortunate I had to fight nobody about that. Who else had eggs? So that Piggly Wiggly on Rivers Avenue, I've heard many people talk about it and, and for the most part, the only thing I didn't get to get today was rice. Um, I prefer jasmine rice or white rice and it, nobody had rice. They had everything like in packages like with seasoning and I don't usually eat that. So I didn't get that. But I think I do have some, um, some left. <laughs> Jennifer says she's looking for money. Yeah, I think we all are. I think we all are. But, um, I do have a, um, it's the people still, like I said, people are still selling and buying houses. So, um, I'm just going to keep riding that wave as long as I can. Um, my husband works, um, still works from home. But how y'all doing with these kids though? Like I wanna hear how y'all doing with your kids at home. Yeah, y'all follow, are y'all about to follow that teacher schedule? I just saw, got a call from the teachers um, or from the school when they were saying that they're issuing out suggestions for how, how we should follow a schedule. <laughs> and one of my Facebook friends, she had a post up and she was saying that she will not be homeschooling. <laughs> she said it's already hard enough that she has to um to work from home. She was like, it's so hard to juggle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you, Frederica and Lydia, for sharing the live post. I appreciate that. That means a lot. That means a lot. So I wanted to see if, uh, what you guys think about these. Um, the Okay, so Family Dollar had successful in the bag. Success writing school in the bag. You know, I'm not a fan of, um, I'm not a fan of that. You like that rice, Barbara? Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. I don't, I'm not feeling that. I like that sticky rice. Sticky rice. 
I'm trying to go in here on some people's pages right now. I got my iPad over here pointing to some pages. What have y'all been thinking about these names? I mean, I know some people are like, some of it's too much. The memes are too much. Um, I've kind of been enjoying some of the humor, especially if it's, if it's, you know, if it's some good stuff. You guys saw the um, video with the um, treadmill, the treadmill challenge. I thought that was pretty funny. I'm seeing people putting pictures of their kids at home, dealing with that. So if, you, if you're just joining, I just kind of was just going over, um, just kind of getting some feedback from some people to see how, how their time at home with the coronavirus has been, um, what have they been doing to make do with some time with their family and friends. Um, I went on a couple bike rides with some friends and my kids, so that was fun. Getting out a little bit. I actually was a little winded. I'm a little, I'm a little out of shape. My trainer, my husband will tell you that. <laughs> He's like, we gotta get back on it. So, I hear some people say they think about starting the podcast. Oh, I would love to hear about that. What do you think about starting your podcast on? Somebody just messaged me about it. I'm just trying to make sure I keep up with the feed. So, I am happy to share any of that stuff. Like, my goal with the podcast, um, I wanted to be a lot more interactive with people. Uh, I'm looking to do some more interviews here while we're kind of shut down with some people. And I have some more guests lined up. I have two more episodes to actually um, put out after this episode airs. So I'll probably lay these out probably tonight. Between tonight and tomorrow, I have two more episodes. They're a little bit more about real estate. Um, one, because um, one touches on a little bit about my, me working with my company. And then the other one talks of, is a new series I'm working on. I'm actually interviewing different agents. And we are um, engaging about the real estate market and some experiences that we're having. Um, things that what we're seeing in the market as far as trends and, and costs. So that's something fun that I'm doing. And I'm doing it with a lot of my referral partners. So people who I already work with um, or have a relationship with across the country. So you'll be uh, seeing me talking with other agents and other um, people in the field, just kind of hearing their their um, their take on the market, and maybe about what they do, what makes them a little different from somebody else, or what they're doing. So that's that's interesting. I'm looking to talk to a few more business owners here in the Charleston area. Um, there's a few um, that I have lined up speaking with. I don't know if you had a chance to listen, but we had um, Dr. Jessica Berry on a couple episodes ago. That was a really good episode. Um, and um, she is actually a speech pathologist by trade, but also um, she specializes in the Geechee Gullah culture and she actually just wrote a book. So if you haven't checked that out, um, definitely, definitely check that out. I'm going to put that in the show notes and you'll get to see the links to all the other episodes that I've done. Um, yeah, Jennifer, it is a good idea. So if you, uh, you or anybody know starting a blog, I'd be happy to, to showcase, showcase that as well. So, who else? Who has? Who has, So, everybody else, what have you been doing as far as the coronavirus is concerned? Um, how you been dealing with work, school, kids? Let us know. Let us know what you've been um, thinking about. Um, things you've been going through. Some struggles. Um, I know for me, a lot of people say they've been eating a lot more. So, I've been trying to offset that. I don't think I eat more. I think I, I think I think I eat a few more mini meals. Yeah, I guess I do have been eating a little more. I have eaten a little bit more meals, um, but I'm trying to get outside and get active again. I'm trying to get back into running and riding my bike because put on a few pounds. Put on a few pounds. So let me make sure I don't have any more comments in here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't have a crystal ball about the market. I can't tell you for sure like it's going to shut down today or tomorrow because we're not seeing any signs of that. And one of the things I was reading about is with this market not being a recession is because um, the home prices like the before what you've seen with recessions is because of obviously overextending and um, predatory lending and things like that from from quite some time ago but what we're seeing right now in this market we are, we're already in a strong market anyway um, what we're seeing is happening is because the housing market is not the cause of of the issues with jobs and whatnot that's one of the reasons why they don't predict the housing market will crash 
is because we're not effect or like we're not influencing it. It's something else influencing it. And that's, that's of course the virus. And of course we don't know how that's going to go. Um, we definitely expect the numbers to go up before they get better, um, before everything, you know, gets better. So we're just trying to be safe out there. I'm praying for you all that you um, stay safe, uh, make some smart decisions, and maybe get to enjoy a walk or two. I've been seeing a lot of my neighbors walk in and ride bikes, so that's that's my cool. We we speak from afar. Um, so again, love to hear from you. Let me know how everything's going with your family and friends, and um, dealing with work and school. Um, Let's see. Anybody else here got a connection to Charleston? That's something we do on our on our podcast. So if you haven't checked out the podcast, it's on my website, Charleston, charlestonreconnection.com. That's charlestonreconnection.com. I'm pretty much talking about all things Charleston and real estate, of course. So um, I look forward to bringing you some more episodes here. We might hit episode 20 before it marches over, actually. Um, Oh, Jennifer had a, has a really good point. She said that this makes me realize how important multiple streams of income really is. And, that, and that's true. That's definitely true. Um, I, I definitely can relate to that. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that when I left my government job, my husband was working as well. And so to put more of my time and effort and money into my business and real estate, it's, it's been helpful. Um, but even still, like, you just never know. You just, times like this make you, you think back about a lot of things, you know. I could have um, put, put that money someplace else, or I could have saved this, or I could have invested in this, and I could have had um, some more income. But the good thing is, if we at least learn from it, if we at least learn from this time where we may be having a tight time with money, or... Um, or just just a hard time in general. Hey, Sarah. If we're having a hard time, it's like it's one of those things we can take to reflect and actually learn from it. I know me personally, the things I probably would have done differently. <laughs> I probably would have traveled a little less past six months. I like to travel and do things. Um, but I know for me, I've also been getting out and trying to. I enjoy my family and friends more and which kind of led to me traveling a little more than I used to <laughs> but I have no regrets about that time spent so enjoy your family enjoy your enjoy your family at least the ones that you have to live with in the house um, definitely pick up the phone and call text some people if you haven't done that in a while I'd love to get your feedback on um, on the podcast so when you have a moment I know you got some free time check out a few episodes browse we also put these videos on our YouTube channel. So, um, as you know, I've, I've been doing YouTube now for a couple years, and I'll still be doing my videos. I've been doing a lot of podcasting lately, but um, I still have some good content coming about buying and selling at the same time. Um, different condos versus a single family home, um, condos versus a single family detached, attached, all that. Um, just kind of just useful information that you can use. Lonnie says, I've been using this time to spring clean. Oh, that too. That too. A friend of mine is staying at my house right now, and it really made me think, like, I got some stuff. I got a lot of stuff to do when I'm not working. So my kids and I, we're actually going through our clothes right now. So if you guys know anybody that could use, like, a good place to donate children's stuff, like, I would really like to know, like, to donate children's clothes and shoes. Um ranging from ages seven to nine that's a good place um Lonnie says I'm also challenging myself to read more any suggestions well Lonnie I'm a huge audiobook person I've been audiobooking since high school yeah since like the 90s how that came about is I had to read a report for school and um the Teacher was like, you had to read a book. And the book was like this thick. And I was like, I am not feeling that book. I don't even, I'm sorry, reading a few pages in. I was like, what am I going to do? So I tried going to the library to kind of isolate myself so I could focus. And um, I stumbled upon the fact that they had an audio book matching the books. I said, oh, you know what? This is weird. I never did audio before, but I will. 
So I um, started reading the book with the audiobook, and that's actually how I um, that's actually how I got into audiobooks. And you know, it's so it's so funny you you mentioned that, Lonnie, because actually, if I listen to an audiobook. I can literally pick up the book after listening to the book and pick up pick up the hard copy and open it to like any page and I remember hearing it. So Oh, thank you, Valerie. Low Country Orphanage, if you want to donate stuff. Thank you. I'm so grateful because I my personal views is these are my own. Um I prefer to donate to places that are not gonna sell it. I will if I have to and I need to get get it out there, um, but I prefer to donate it to places like that, so Low Country Orphan. I'll save the really nice pieces for them. Um, still got more. So thank you for that, Valerie. Oh, thank you, Lamar. I appreciate that. He said thank you for spreading information and being a positive influence. I appreciate it. I'm going to tell you right now, like, when I do these videos and I do this podcasting and all this stuff, like, I do it because I really want to give value, but at the same time, it, it always feels odd to me. Like, I get more comfortable doing it, but it always feels odd because I think one thing that we always have to deal with when we're trying something new is you always wonder what people are going to think. And once you get over that point, you just do everything. And I'm, I'm over that point, but at the same time, like, every it's still a little awkward because, you know, seeing my, seeing my on camera and hear my voice so yes thank you I appreciate that Valerie. so um, anybody else got anything they wanted to share I'm so happy y'all keep sharing these memes because I like to laugh and I haven't been on Instagram a whole lot lately but um I have been enjoying these memes and especially the ones that are, are um are classy not the not the not the awful ones let me see what else I got on here Yep, yep. So again, I got a couple new podcast episodes coming out right after this one. I just wanted to do something different um, with the live. I really didn't know how this would go, but I really do appreciate all the love and support. People jumping on, watching, and you know the numbers going up and down. That's so cool. I appreciate that. Um, I see here. I wanted to give you guys um, on a positive note. I wanted to mention. I did a post asking everybody what they were grateful for. And I did that because it's so easy to complain. Like, easy, complaining is the easiest thing. And um, in my course, I just took one of the things that um, somebody mentioned was they mentioned that you should have a blessings book. So I don't know how you guys feel about writing. I know we don't write as much as we used to, and we text a lot, and we type a lot. But one of the things that they recommend, let's see if I have mine with me. I have mine on my desk. But anyway, one of the things I recommend is a blessing book. And when you get up in the morning or right before you go to bed, um, whatever your preference is, is you write three things you're grateful for that happened to you that day. And um, we had, I, I saw a post about two weeks ago, somebody who I'm Facebook friends with, um, she was, in, they had her, this is when they really just started getting cases of the coronavirus in South Carolina. And she learned that she may have been infected. And they had her like in some room and was quarantined. And all I could do was just thank God because I just felt so grateful that, you know, that could be have been so many other people I knew. And to see her with her mask and, you know, her splatter, that's proof thing for your eyes. Like she had that on and she's just sitting there and she's going live on Facebook. And she's like, I just want to let you guys know I'm in the hospital. And I was like, wow, like that's, that's, that's crazy. It's crazy. I just, I pray for those of you who are. Who may be at risk and, and out there on the front lines, my hometown heroes on the move, who I always, um, who actually who I serve in the real estate business a lot of the time, military, um, medical professionals, police. Kudos to you guys and God bless you and your families. But anyway, as I was saying, ending on a, on a good note, what are you grateful for? Here are some of the comments people said, um, which I thought was awesome, some of the stuff they said. Danny said I'm, he's grateful for a healthy family and friends. Um, Ephraim said he's grateful for life. A lot of people said they're grateful for life. Brian said he's grateful for Jesus' family and health. Um, Lamar said I'm grateful uh, for being able to have life and, and having more life to live. Um, Gwen, who lost her son recently, Jason, we... Who we, who we love dearly. I mean, somebody who just lost her son, she said she's grateful for health 
life and strength among friends and friends. I mean, that's powerful. Somebody just lost their, their son. And he didn't, she didn't lose her son to coronavirus, but he, he just, we lost him suddenly. Um, he was, he was a pillar in our community to be able to just be grateful despite everything that's going on. Um, losing your son, things happen to you and your family. I mean, that's, that's powerful stuff. Um, a friend of mine said she was grateful for me. I thought that was nice. Um, Carlia said, my relationship with God. Another, Desiree said she's grateful for her horses because she was saying it's keeping her sane right now. A lot of people deal with anxiety. So that's, that's something to you know, grateful about that you, you're able to find a way to cope and practice my life. Yeah, so a lot of people just said that, you know, said some really powerful things. Anyway, I'm just sharing that with you guys. So if you're out there um, having a hard time, definitely reach out to somebody, let somebody know. And if you're not talking to anybody, if you're just talking on the phone, reach out, call, text somebody and see how they're doing. I mean, you'd be surprised. The hardest thing you want, you don't want is just to lose somebody because you just didn't, didn't reach out. Um, so maybe we can try to check on a few of our friends and family and see how they're doing. I know I'm gonna do that when I get off this call. Um, check on some people. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm so grateful to you. If, again, you can check out this episode, this 12th episode of the Charleston Real Estate Connection podcast on my website, charlestonreconnection.com. Charlestonreconnection.com. I may edit it a little bit because I know we were like pausing here and there. Hey, Crystal. Thank you. Yes, anxiety is no joke. It's no joke. Um, it's real. I've, I've dealt with it myself and still, you know, let's see. Thank you guys again. Thank you guys for listening and watching. Again, I'll put the, in the comments, the website that you can check out more of the other podcast episodes. I look forward to sharing the other ones. They're about ready to just really release. I look forward to doing more live videos here while we're going through this time. I will see you on the next one. Stay golden, stay safe, um, and have a good evening. Bye. This has been another episode of the Charleston Real Estate Connection Podcast. You can find us on our website at charlestonreconnection.com. That's charlestonreconnection.com.